I absolutely love war films. They are by far my favorite genre film, as seen here on my letterbox. Honestly, I think they peaked with Saving Private Ryan and Band of Brothers back in the day. But the very odd time you get something special like Oppenheimer or Masters of the Air, we have seen a lot of different perspectives of war told on film. And today I wanted to talk about the new World War II movie starring Kate Winslet, Lee. Now, right off the bat, this wasn't really the movie that I was expecting. It was very close-minded of me, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I thought it was just gonna be action scenes and shooting, but I, I was completely wrong. Don't get me wrong, there are one or two shooting and action scenes, but they are so underwhelming, man. So, don't go into this movie thinking that it's like a band of brothers or the Pacific kind of thing. Think of it more as a Munich on the edge of war type of film where it's centered around the conflict, but you never actually see any of it. This movie is all about Elizabeth Miller. It's the classic movie scenario where she's being interviewed long after the war and she's kind of reminiscing on all the stuff she did uh, during that time. It starts off with her time before the war and if you're not a complete fucking idiot like me, you'll know that this movie is all about what Vogue did during the conflict. Like, it's literally shown in the trailer. I, I don't know what the fuck I was thinking, thinking that this was going to be like a, a Saving Private Ryan kind of movie. To be fair, they did show the action shot in the trailer a good bit, so I think that's where I got confused. Anyway. The movie has a very heavy focus on kind of the cinematography of the scenes and I think that's kind of mimicking what Lee Miller did with her photos. I don't know, I, I think that's what the perspective is anyway. I'm probably talking complete shite altogether. For example, there's this really emotional scene where this French couple, where they're dancing in front of a Hitler film and it's like a slow dance and everything. It's very, very emotional. Considering there's about a million World War II movies, I've never seen a scene like that before and it was really emotional actually because they were French and realistically you knew they were either gonna die or something bad was gonna happen. It focuses a lot more on Lee Miller's relationships than it actually does on the war. After spending some time in mainland Europe she decides to move to London with her now husband that she met in Italy I remember. The war is broken out and she wants to get involved. This is when she was hired by Vogue and let me just stop us there. Up to this point in the film it's probably been around 45 minutes I thought some of the acting was very, very poor, man. Not really the main cast, but some of her friends in the movie, I thought their acting was just not up to par at all. And it was really starting to take away from the film. Maybe Kate Winslet was just on a completely different level to all these people, but man, some of the acting was just so bad. I quite enjoyed the direction this movie went down. Not only did it focus on the photos of war, but it also kind of showed what women did during the war. Of course it's been done before. I watched A Call to Spy not too long ago and that's also all about the roles that women played. One really cool thing with this movie is that all the pictures that she takes in the film are actually real pictures and it really does add to the movie. They end up showing all the real ones in the credits at the end and it was it was so cool. It was really, really interesting. Be like, oh yeah, that was in the movie. So let me give you a bit of a history lesson here now, okay? Basically, during the war, Vogue was tasked with showing what women are doing to help um, during the conflict. But Lee Miller wanted a bigger slice of that pie. She wanted to go to France and take pictures on the front lines. Now, this is where we see one of the worst casting decisions I've probably ever seen in a movie. They cast Andy Samberg as a war photographer. He literally looks like someone that was born in this day and age. I don't know how to describe it, but someone on Letterboxd said it really well. They said Andy Samberg just looks like a guy that knows what an iPad is. <laughs> He's a good actor, of course, but considering his roles in Brooklyn Nine-Nine as kind of a comedian, this was really, really weird. It was almost like when Band of Brothers cast David Schwimmer as the really serious kind of general who's trying to prepare these soldiers for war. But he is an outstanding actor and he did it really, really well. They finally make their way into the conflict and to be honest with you, I was really, really bored at this stage. We're probably around an hour, an hour and 10 minutes into the film. The movie was just really, really slow to develop and the poor acting was really starting to take a toll on me. It really didn't help when the only action scene was really lackluster. It definitely got better after that. There was a few very hard hitting emotional scenes where 
she's taking pictures of the conflict and kind of showing the true nature of war considering her photos are real it definitely adds to the film a lot my favorite scene by a country mile was when they entered the concentration camp this was definitely what the whole movie was leading up to i don't want to spoil it too much but the build up to it the atmosphere the sound the music it was so so good it was definitely quite weird going from a very bang average movie to a absolutely amazing scene like that and after that scene the movie stayed pretty consistent it was very exciting there was one or two more scenes just like the concentration camp one that's the very basic outline of the movie now for the first half of this i was definitely sitting on a 2 2.5 for my rating man i thought it was it was very bad and it just didn't seem to go anywhere i didn't know what it was leading to it seemed very pointless the whole thing kate winslet was very good of course but other people were just not pulling their weight at all the constant bad acting i was just like what is this you know for example one of the generals that she ends up talking to he was actually in masters of the air and he was shocking he was absolutely shocking in this but he was amazing in masters of the air so i was kind of like why is he so bad now but he's really good then that wasn't that long ago you know what i mean as i've said already the film kind of just took too long to explain things and that really affected the flow and to whoever cast andy sandberg what the fuck is wrong with you man what went through your head when you were doing that i know he's kind of like a a big name actor or whatever but i was like oh my god man i can't believe this i like you can't take the guy seriously you know what i mean i thought for band of brothers you weren't going to be able to take david schwimmer seriously either but he made you take him seriously do you know what i mean his acting was just unbelievable in that now, I'm not saying Andy Samberg was bad in this. He was actually pretty good, but it was just, it wasn't as good as what David Schwimmer did back then. And maybe it's a bit unfair for me to compare to those. But look, at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal. The second half of the movie was good. Really, really good. It got a lot more interesting. The story about how her famous pictures were made really started to develop. Her photos showed the brutal reality of war, and that's why this movie was really important to make it also showed what women had to go through during the war that men didn't and that is a massive part of the film as well so what am i rating lee the start was too slow some of the acting was very poor and honestly some of the story was just very boring but the second half was much better it felt like everything was building up to the concentration camp throughout the entire movie it was constantly mentioned the characters in the film slowly start to understand like what is actually happening we obviously know what happens but it never fails to shock me like of what actually happened and they did a really good job of building that up showing the true massacre uh, true lee's pictures as i've said during the credits they actually showed the real photos taken and it surprisingly added a lot to the movie considering it was finished already i gave this movie three and a half stars trying to get to the root of the problem i think they tried to do something different but the writing was just a bit boring shit first half much better second half let me know what your thoughts are did you enjoy the movie are you going to go watch the movie even though i gave a 3.5 i still recommend you go watch it and if you're big into war films still go and watch it it's a it's an interesting perspective on the war thank you so much for watching please like subscribe have a good day goodbye